Well, folks, on this episode, I'm joined by a gentleman who's part of what I like to call the new breed of British rock guitarists. Uh, the gentleman in question is, of course, Mr. Jared James Nichols. Welcome to rockposer.com. Glad to be here. Thank you for having me. It's a real pleasure, Jared. Um, when I refer to the new breed, I think that the, uh, the blues rock scene's had a massive resurgence in probably the last three to four years. Oh, I think you're right. I mean, there's so many great players coming up right now. It's uh, it's unbelievable, actually. It's amazing. I think it's great. I mean, for someone who prefers, shall we say, this end of the blues to, shall we say, the bluegrass end, for me, hey, as a fan, it's all good <laughs> stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know what? It's, to me, as long as it's got a great guitar and some soul behind it, man, I'm in. Absolutely. And, of course, you're back in the UK once again. Um, you can't keep away from this country, I guess. I guess it's like turning into, they're going to kick me out soon. You know? They just haven't caught on yet. <laughs> They'll so find out you're out a colonial. No, it, it's been amazing. <laughs> well, of course, yeah. you're back to do um, an absolute shed load of dates, um, one of which I'm going to have the pleasure of actually seeing you at, which is at Rambling Man, which is literally 10 minutes down the road from me. So uh, <laughs> a nice, easy one from my point of view. But uh, your special oh, guest was awesome. two awesome bands as well, uh, Blue Was a Cold and UFO. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Wow. No, yeah, it's uh, the Ramblin' Man Festival this year, the lineup. I am so excited. When we got booked on that, I was like over the moon. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Well, that's great. We're going to hang out. It is a, it is a fantastic lineup. Um, yeah, we've, we've got, gone in whole hog as a family this year. I mean, there's so many bands that uh, I'm ticking. I'm going, yeah, I don't care if this kills me. I'm going to enjoy myself. <laughs> no, absolutely. I mean, the... That festival, I mean, everyone always said to me in the past years I've been here, when are you playing Ramblin' Man? When are you playing? Mm. And I said, I don't know. I'd love to. Hopefully I'll have the chance. And here we are. It's going to be, what are we, about a month away, right? Yeah, just about a month away, well, yeah. More than a month. Yeah, it's exciting. Very exciting. And plus, of course, you're playing up the mountain in Wales at Steel House as well. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. We played there, actually. We played a gig there, uh, one of the first shows I ever did. Uh, well, the first show in Wales for sure mm. was uh, was there. We actually played uh, about a week before the festival. Unfortunately, we weren't around for the festival, but uh, I remember we had a blast. We played inside the, I think it was inside the rugby club there, and uh, man, it was a blast. So I'm excited for that one too. And it's cool because we're gonna see a lot of friends, like you know the Saxon guys that we mm. love and we've been on the road with, and you know it's it's gonna be really fun. They're a great bunch of guys. One of the first bands I ever got into. They were actually my local band when I when I first got into music. Wow, that's awesome. We were just hanging out with them uh, at Hellfest. Yeah, uh, they they're so cool. They let me come up and jam with them, and you know, such supportive, great guys. That's fantastic. And of course, we must talk about um, the highly anticipated. And I'm going to say that without trying to embarrass you. Uh, new album that of course is out in <laughs> September. Black Magic. Uh, obviously, the the new single. Um, we've already got the video out already for Last Chance, and uh, my God, you rip it yeah. up a bit on that one. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Uh, I had to do something that was gonna leave a mark. If right. that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, to me, it, it didn't make sense to put out uh, something that everyone was gonna really think I was gonna do, or something that was, you know. I had to come out with a little bit of a bang, man. And, uh, you know, a lot of people went, whoa, this is heavy. Whoa, this is heavy. And uh, the thing is, you know, it's up-tempo, it's in your face, and, um, you know, it's still raw. And if anything, it's just one of the many directions that the new album's going. You know, there's a ton of bluesy stuff. There's some, there's some really cool skinnerty stuff, you know. We, we touch on so many bases, and uh, that's one of them. I've got to say, it's um, it seems to be the way for a lot of bands now. I mean, one band that springs to mind um, would be Raven Eye because uh, Ollie Brown was uh, started his career as a very young bluesman uh, in stripy trousers, and now they're an out and out rock band. But there's a lot of other blues rock bands right. who are really sort of throwing a few heavy things out there to sort of yeah you know, feel the temperature, so to speak. Which I think is great because it's bringing a lot more young people into the genre and making them sort of open their ears to different stuff. You're absolutely right. And uh, for a guy like me, do not get me wrong. Blues will always come as my number one. I still listen to blues every single day. Mm. But the thing is, like what you just brought up is the fact that this genre needs, everyone needs to understand that 
it's not only rooted in, uh, you know, Chicago blues, Delta blues, Texas blues, um, you know, the British blues. It needs to breathe and it needs to be current today, too, yeah. as well. And, um, you know, there's a lot of people that won't like it or they won't understand the fact that it gets a little heavier. But if it's a way to bring young people and introduce them and start to slip the little bit of blues into their ear and get them out to shows and start supporting this kind of music, I'm all for it, you know, because I just want to play and spread it for as many people as possible. And uh, I, I don't want anyone to get the wrong impression that I'm, because uh, I've seen people say, oh, no, he's not doing blues anymore. And that's not the case at all. I still, I absolutely love the blues. But I must say, when you tour with Zach Wilde all over the world, <laughs> you're going to get a little uh, a little bit of a uh-uh, if you know what I mean. Somebody's going to rub off, to say the least. Exactly, exactly. But, you know, OK, there's a few traditionalists might get upset with uh, with yourself and a few other acts, but maybe that's not a bad thing. As you say, it needs to kick up the backside somewhat. Uh, I'm seeing a lot more young people really at, at blues gigs. It's not uh, 65-year-old men sitting in the corner nodding their heads anymore. You know, there's a vibrant crowd coming in. Yeah. And that's got to be a positive thing. Yeah, it's it's got to go that direction. I mean, people need to get excited again, you know. And uh, I would, I'll would i be the first to put on a, a classic blues record and I'll be the first to enjoy it and respect it for everything it is. But this day and age, we all need to come together and understand mm. that if someone's putting their soul and their heart into some music that's got a thick blues bass and whether they're rocking it out or they're playing some Stone Cold Blues, you know, the fact that it's 2017 and there's still young guys and young girls trying to make that music relevant and trying to push the good word because at the end of the day somebody's got to keep doing it and uh you know a lot of the guys i know that are younger guys that are adding a little bit more rock in there we're just we're really trying to just spread the word and and to get it into people's ears somehow you know so for me it's more of a mission statement than mm -hmm. it is oh i do rock and roll now it's more of a mission statement yeah. to solidify that music you know well, something I've said on, um, probably I bore people stiff a number of times I've said it, but f for me, there's only two types of music. There's music I like and music I don't like. And whether that could be exactly. blues, could be rock, could be soul, could be funk, it doesn't matter what it is. You know, music's music. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. I'm with you on that. And it's, yeah, and that's the biggest thing I pick up on. Is it real or is it not? Is it a, you know, what? what is this guy trying to do? And, uh, yeah, it's, that's right. I'm with you, man. Either I like it or I don't. So what bands that are around currently are, are exciting you personally? You know, there's a lot of young bands uh, that are pretty exciting to me. I mean, I've known and I really love guys, of course, like Blackberry Smoke, Rival Sons, Gary Clark Jr., of course, um, those kind of acts. But, you know, there's some... Uh, we just played Hellfest, and there's some other kind of bands, too, that I thought were really good. Um, Vintage Caravan. Oh, yeah. I just saw them for the first time the other mm. day, and I thought that that was a great show. It was something totally I wasn't expecting, and I thought that that was awesome. Um, you know, there's a ton of great guitarists. That goes without saying. I mean, I see them almost every day. There's a lot of a lot of guys like um, Jamie Simo, and, you know, there's... There's just guitar players sprouting up everywhere. And yeah. like you said, there's a big resurgence of this music that's, uh, that's pretty exciting. And the thing that I think is really great is, people, is a lot of the musicians that I see are really trying and they're really going for it to try and get the music heard, which um, I don't think that's happened in blues rock for a minute where um, artists have been actually trying to fight and climb their way up. And I think that that's amazing. Yeah, I think it's probably taken a, shall we say, the comfy chair somewhat over the last 20 years. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, th to get this resurgence, and let's face it, considering um, the state of the music industry as it is at the moment, um, the fact that everyone mm -hmm. has still got the passion, it's not been exhausted, and they're still fighting for what uh, what they enjoy and what they believe in, I mean, for me, um, it, it's just an absolute joy. Absolutely. I'm, I, I couldn't imagine, honestly, I'd love to be a musician right now because like we're just talking about, I really think that um, this is a great time. And if any time needs it, it's now to bring some, some, some really good stuff back, you know, put it back out there. 
Well, obviously, the blues and blues rock scene in Europe, especially, is very, very strong at the moment. Not just in the UK, but mm-hmm. I can think of um, well, France and certainly Holland has got a, a, a huge blues scene. I mean, what it, what do you find oh, yeah. the state of it in the in the states at the moment? I mean, I, I again, it's something I've brought up in previous interviews with people because I, I hear mixed things. Some people say, "Oh, it's really good," and other people say, "Oh, man, it's really dire where we are because just there's nowhere to play." How do you find it? Well, it's funny. Um, before I started doing a lot of support slot tours, um, I was having a really hard time trying to find outlets. Uh, basically, in the South, it was really great for me. I, I love playing in the Southern states. Um, and also in the Midwest, you know, in, uh, right in middle America, uh, you know, people still love it and they still embrace rock and roll and blues rock and, you know, blues. Where I grew up, I was near Chicago, so I was able to get into that Chicago blues scene at an early age. Right. Um, so I had that around, but, um, you know, I understand a lot of, uh, Americans trying to say that it's really hard to play because they're right. There's a ton, a ton of States that really don't even have any great venues anymore. They've all shut down or they've turned into, you know, something completely different. Um, you know, but I would say that once I started doing the support slot tours, it, it kind of switched for me as far as, you know, I was able to bring the blues to a bigger audience right. and it didn't matter in America where we were. Uh, the people loved it. Mm. So once it was in front of them, it was, it was like a great response, you know, whether we were playing New York city or Austin, Texas, you know? So for me, that was pretty amazing to see because there had been times I'd gone and struggled in the, these states. And then all of a sudden to come back on a real tour, it, it just freshened it all up. And I was able to see that, wow, there actually is people here that still love this music, you know, but it is hard to find the right venues in America. I will say that. I guess it's also, it's it's getting people out of their houses. Everyone's just content to sit on the interwebs and, um, and listen to music like that when, you know, you can't beat the live experience. I think you're absolutely right. You know, it's uh, one of those things where I think people just got to get out again. Everyone's too comfy. Yeah, everyone's that's... a little too comfy sitting sitting behind the computer and it's uh it's a little bit more of a time now that uh if anything live music you know it's real you know i was just having this conversation the other day with someone you can see a million guitar players online but i don't think it has the same effect as seeing a great band live you know getting the real feel for it and getting understanding what that's all about you know it's a totally different animal and i think once people are in that element they see it you know, it's just you have to get him there. Absolutely. I mean, I can think that when I when I took my son to his first uh, his first gig and just sort of saw his eyes sort of pop open, <laughs> that experience of, of of seeing a live band. Um, yeah, oh, there yeah. is no other feeling that you know without a shadow of a doubt. Absolutely, it's great. It's great, and it's it's still alive. People just need to go out and not only support local and live music, but just go out and enjoy it. You know, for what it is. Well, before I let you go, I ought to mention, um, obviously, the dates that uh, you're playing here in the UK. So, folks, you can uh, you can literally get off that comfy chair and get out and, and listen to some great live <laughs> music. Um, obviously, you've just played Hellfest. 21st, you're at um, the fabulous Yardbirds up in Grimsby. Uh, 24th of June, yeah. you're down in Milton Keynes at the Crawford Arms. Then over to Manchester at the Academy on the 25th. Um, you're in Newcastle on the 26th. Uh, the uh, fabulous Rock City in Nottingham on the 28th. Uh, then all up to Glasgow for the 29th at the ABC. Then all the way back down to Birmingham. My God, you're putting the miles in. <laughs> at the Town Hall on the 27th. <laughs> Blackburn on the 28th at yeah. King George's Hall. Then, of course, as we mentioned, at Ramblin' Man on the 29th of July. And I cannot wait for that. And obviously the following day, you finish up there at Steelhouse Festival. Um, I think you're going to yeah. have a bit of a blast over the next month and a half. There's no shadow of doubt there. Oh, no, it's going to be packed in and it's going to be exciting. And it's really going to just be awesome to go travel all around and meet new people and just keep spreading the good word. Well, hopefully I'll catch up with you at Ramley Man. I'm certainly already looking forward to seeing your set, Jared. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure uh, chatting today. Thanks for joining me on rockpose.com. And I wish you all the best with the tour and the album when it comes out later in the year. Cheers, man. Great talking to you. And I'll see you at Ramley Man. Cheers, mate. Okay. Bye-bye.